In this video I'm going to show you how to apply sig figs when you're doing a calculation. Here are the sig fig rules again, just as a reminder. You should have a copy of these rules in your workbook already. OK, so frequently you'll take a measurement in an experiment, but you'll then need to do a calculation using that measurement. For instance, say you measure the mass and the volume of a sample of liquid so that you can calculate its density. You measure the mass on a really accurate balance, so you have that value to 5 sig figs. But you measure the volume using a beaker, so that measurement is 1, maybe 2 sig figs at best. How does that affect the accuracy of your answer? How many sig figs should your answer be? Well, let's say this is your mass and this is your volume. And let's put that in the calculator to calculate the density. And the calculator tells us that we have 1.38175 and we're going to put the units in as grams per mil because the units of our mass was grams and the units of our volume was mils. And we don't like naked numbers. Uh, so the answer that the calculator has given has six significant figures. Now, can I really be that accurate in my density value if I only knew the volume to one sig fig? Well, of course not. The true volume of the sample could be anywhere between 75 and 84 mils. And that means that the true value of the density could be anywhere between, and you can calculate this for yourself, 1.32 or 1.47. Now if you look at that range, it's big enough that we don't know the value of that first decimal place. It could be a 3, or it could be a 4, or it could even round up to a 5. Hence, we're only sure of the first digit of the value of our density, the 1. So this leads me to an important point. When you're doing calculations on measurements, you're limited by the accuracy of your least accurate measuring device, which in this case was the beaker. And a second important point, the calculator is a tool and not a crutch. It will simply do the calculation that you ask it to with no regard to accuracy or sig figs or anything like that. Applying the sig figs correctly is up to you. Don't think that because the calculator gives you something that has 15 decimal places that you should necessarily count all of those decimal places. So here are the guidelines for how to apply sig figs to your calculations. And before I even start, let me just bring up one more crucial point. When you're doing a multi-step calculation, that is a calculation where you'll get several intermediate answers before you get to your final one, do not round off or apply significant figures until you get to your final answer. This is really important. OK, so here are the rules. When you're multiplying or dividing, look for the number that you've used that has the least number of sig figs. You should then round your final answer to that number of sig figs. For instance, if we do the calculation 16.35 grams divided by 7.09 mils, the calculator gives me the answer 2.3060648, etc., etc. I'm going to write that down to five or six decimal places. I'm going to leave some dots after it to show that it continues on. But I know that my final answer can't possibly be that accurate. I go back to the values that I used in the calculation. 16.35 has four sig figs and 7.09 has three sig figs. Of those, the three sig figs is the lower, so that is the number of sig figs that I should express my final answer to. So I round that number to 2.31 grams per mil. Now when you're adding and subtracting, the rule is slightly different. Rather than looking for the number with the fewest sig figs, you're looking for the number with the fewest decimal places. For instance, if I add 46.1 metres to 0.901 metres, the calculator tells me the answer is 47.001 metres. But 46.1 has only one decimal place. So my final answer must also be rounded to one decimal place. So the answer is 47.0 metres. And let me just remind you again, although I haven't done an example here, when you're doing multi-step calculations, wait until you have your absolutely final answer to round off, and then go back through all your calculation steps to find the value that limits your accuracy, and then you can round off accordingly. So let's try some examples. Firstly, 20.1 divided by 0.047. 
and put that into the calculator and we get 427.65957 etc. Now of the two numbers that we used in our calculation 0.047 has the fewest sig figs, it has two. So our final answer must also be rounded to two sig figs. This gives us 430. Next, uh, 47.2 minus 0.8359. We put it into the calculator and we get 46.3641. Now, because this is a subtraction, we're looking at decimal places and not sig figs. So the first number has one decimal place and the second has four. Hence, our final answer must be rounded to one decimal place and that gives us 46.4. Alright, next, uh, 0.9814 times 24. We put that into the calculator and we get 23.5536. Of the two numbers that we used, uh, 24 has the fewest sig figs, it has two. So our final answer must also be rounded to two sigs, which gives us 24. Now does that seem a bit weird? We've multiplied 24 by something that's not 1, and yet we still ended up with 24. Well, the reason is that we don't know the original 24 very accurately. It's not 24.00, for instance. So when we multiply it by a number that's very close to 1, it doesn't make enough of a difference for us to be able to see a change. Alright, lastly, we've got 10 litres plus 9.6 millilitres. Think about a full 10 litre bucket and a 10 mil measuring cylinder with 9.6 mils of water in it. Well, we can't just add 10 litres to 9.6 mils. Why not? Well, the units are different. We need to convert one of those values so that both of them have the same unit. I'm going to convert 9.6 mils to litres. Quick conversion shows us that it's 0 0.0096 litres. So then we have 10 plus 0 0.0096, which gives us 10.0096. But it's an addition, so we're checking decimal places. Now the 10 litres has no decimal places, so our final answer must also be rounded to no decimal places. And that makes it 10 litres. Hmm. Well, this is an example a little like the previous one, where it seems like nothing has happened. Because the large volume here was much less accurately measured than the small volume, adding the small volume does not make a measurable difference. Imagine pouring the 9.6 mils into the 10 litre bucket. Would you see a measurable change in the level of the water? If, however, the 10 litres had been measured in a giant volumetric flask or on a balance and it was known to be 10.0000 litres, then the extra 0 0.0096 litres would be measurable. Now let's do one final example. Say we have 10 measuring cylinders and each one contains 153 mils of water and we want to know what the total volume of water is. We're going to pour all of these into a single container. The calculation is 10 times 153, giving the calculator answer of 1530 mils. But you might look at that and say, well the 10 only has one sig fig so I should round that off to 2000 mils. But think about it. The 10 refers to the number of measuring cylinders. Is there any doubt about how many measuring cylinders there are? Do you think if you measured more carefully you might find that there was actually 10.1 measuring cylinders? No, of course not. The 10 figure here is what's known an, as a countable or an exact number. It in effect has infinite significant figures. It is known exactly. And as a consequence it does not affect the number of sig figs in your calculation. So here we use the sig figs in the volume measurement to determine our answer. And since there are three, that means that our original, the original answer that the calculator gave, 1530 mils, is actually correct.